Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. I'm going to be reviewing this portable monitor here. Thank you very much to Intihil for sending this out to me for review. Very briefly, we can take a look at the model. So this is the HS156PN. It is a 15.6 inch 1080p monitor. What's included in the box is obviously the portable monitor. They include one th Thunderbolt USB-C cable, one USB-A to USB-C cable, which can be used for charging purposes, as well as one mini HDMI to regular HDMI cable. And that's what's included in the box. Very briefly, let's go over the specs of the device itself. So it is a 1080p panel that is rated at 60 hertz. However, it does feature adaptive sync. Now the range isn't very large, it's only 48 to 60 hertz. However, we could probably try to modify the EDID and try to get that down to about 43 hertz to just kind of open up that range a bit. However, by default, this is only 48 to 60 hertz. They also do claim that it is HDR600 panel. I have been able to get uh, HDR10 bit working on this panel. Uh, additionally, the things that they do claim on this device is that it takes 10 to 15 watts of power now, for what it's worth, on my end, I've only seen this taking around max at 5 watts, so it's better in that regard, even with the brightness maxed out to 100% and pushing the speakers to full volume. It does have a headphone jack, but it also has speakers included. Now, they're not going to blow you away, but they can serve a purpose for just being general speakers. Okay, so rather than wait to get to the end of the review, I'm going to go over some of the things that I don't like on this particular monitor very quickly. So they have this kind of leather cover that also acts as the stand it is kind of flimsy and can flop down it has flopped down on me once or twice nothing really happened it's just kind of slightly annoying uh trying to get this to bend in correctly to lock in place is not the best but it does work every now and again the other thing that i wish is that they kind of used up all of the available real estate on both sides which means that you can't actually put this device in portrait mode because on every side of this device, they actually have buttons. So there's a button here for the power as well as for the on-screen display and to use the on-screen display. So even if you were trying to put it vertically on this side, you'll actually be pressing the power button periodically and it'll turn off. And on this side, you can't do it vertically because you'll have cables and stuff over here. So those are the two things that I don't really like about the, uh, the portable monitor. That's not a whole bunch there. I mean, outside of that, for how much it costs, it's fine. It's just that those, if they had a better type of locking mechanism to lock it into when you wanted to tent it, as well as putting all of the ports on one side, this way you had the ability to use it portrait style. Those are the two big gripes I have with this particular portable monitor. Outside of that, let's go ahead and start talking about what we can do with it. So right now you're gonna see this USB-C port right here, but on the other end is a USB-A port and I'm plugging that into the Xbox Series X right on the front. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in on the bottom port right down in here just so you can see. And that five watts will be all we need to power this up. And then I'm going to be using the included mini HDMI cable, which right now is connected to my Xbox Series X. So hopefully that sound came across pretty well so you can get an idea of what type of sound you're going to be getting out of the speakers. It's really not the best. It's not super awesome, but it does work. And obviously you can also use uh, a three and a half millimeter jack to plug in headphones and use it that way, which is probably going to be the best. Now, if we go ahead and take a look here, you can see that everything is saying that it doesn't support a bunch. But if we go into here, it says allow 50 hertz. Now, we can hit 50 hertz, obviously, because we can go down to 48 hertz. You can see we have uh, HDR10 and auto HDR and we allow for a valuable variable uh, VRR. So this does support VRR, but only between 48 to 60 Hertz. So not a huge range, but in a few games that would be using it, that would be kind of nice. Welcome to Mars City. This facility serves as the central hub for all scientific research. Attention, Director Banks, please report to central administration. So now what's really cool here is that the panel itself is only taking five watts, and that includes 100% brightness. So if we take a look here, we can see we're at 100% brightness as well as 100% volume. Going to adaptive sync, this is off, but you could put it on. Now, obviously, you're going to need something that would support that. So if you have it connected to an Xbox Series S or an Xbox Series X, it will work, as well as on Windows, it'll work. All right, so now let's say that you have a device that supports Thunderbolt 3. Now, for what it's worth, if you just have something that's USB-C that will support display out, unless it's Thunderbolt 3, it doesn't seem like this panel will actually work unless it's Thunderbolt 3. So we're going to go ahead and connect the GPU in 3 because it's one of the few Thunderbolt 3 devices that I have. We're going to use the cable that Intihil supplied themselves. So we'll go ahead and connect this here. 
and I will connect it to the bottom port. So you can see that it's getting power and we are pushing display to it as well. And the only thing that we have here, as you can see, is just this one single cable. So the GPD Win 3 itself is pushing to this. Now, again, the only thing that I found here is that the panel will take five watts. So five watts extra is being robbed from the GPD Win 3's battery to power this display. So this isn't really the most ideal case anyway to just be running a single cable to a larger panel because you will be basically spending an extra five watts just for a larger display. So to use HDR, you do have to actually trigger some of the power saving features that Windows will have on by default. So you're gonna to have to say, optimize for image quality. Once you do that, you'll be able to flick this on as opposed to before where it said that it wasn't temporarily unavailable. Uh, additionally, if we take a look, we can see that VRR is already enabled by default. So if we go here, and here you can see variable refresh rate is already enabled and that's coming out of the USB-C cable and this is also on an Intel platform. All right, so you can't see it over here, but right there is HDR and I do have HDR on. We're gonna run at 720p because we won't be able to hit that frame rate at 1080p. I am doing ultra quality at 720p, just to lower resolution a little bit more, just to extract as much as we can out of here. I'm gonna to go to low settings. And let's get into game. Welcome back, Fox. So what's interesting here is it does look like HDR on does actually require significantly more power to run with HDR. So if you have standard SDR, it'll only take around five watts, but it will actually go up to 15 watts. So this would be an area, right? If we can get down, this down, if we did some edit hacking and try to extend the range of the VRR range down to 42 Hertz, we would pretty much have a better range because we are, as you saw, we go down to like 42, 43 periodically in this particular game but going down to 43 is a, a bigger help than just going down to 48 hertz still overall quite playable no screen tearing So now we were powering the entire display off of the Win 3 itself. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in a USB-C connection that is powered on. So this is USB-C PD. Now take a look down here where the battery icon is. When I go ahead and plug in here, it actually acts as power pass-through. So you can see right down here, my GPD Win 3, which is plugged in here, is now taking power in through the monitor and coming out through this cable. So this cable has power coming in via this route, but I'm still doing display out to the monitor itself. All right, so here is the Steam Deck. So I'm going to take the same cable that was plugged in for the display and power on the Win 3. I'm going to go ahead and connect the Steam Deck. Okay. And now the Steam Deck is being driven here. So I'll go ahead and launch control. Now up here, notice that we are charging the battery on the Steam Deck itself. So you get power in through the monitor and display and power bi-directionally works as it should. All right, so here we are using the Steam Deck and pushing the display out to this portable monitor and it works just fine now again this will only work if we are powering the monitor via USB-C connection so just doing 5 watt alone 
really sh isn't enough. If you're going to be doing that, you might as well just be using the PD compliant charger to boost it, you know, get like a 40 watt to power the, the monitor and also do power pass through to the Steam Deck itself. So if I were to go ahead and remove power, the Steam Deck itself is incapable of powering the monitor itself and drawing the display. So that's going to be my look at the Intahill. This is the HS156PN model. If you were in the market for a portable monitor, yeah, it's it's easy enough to recommend. I really have a big fascination with these types of things. I'm going to be using this as my secondary display for my main desktop going forward just to see how long this lasts and have like a kind of a follow-up review later on, provided that anything goes wrong with this device. Again, the things that I don't like about the device, I wish that the business end of everything was over here. This way it would be easier to do a portrait style display if you wanted to. Uh, additionally, I wish that this cover was just a little bit better. But if you were looking something for like for your Steam Deck to have as a portable display, something that is super compact and small, yeah, it works just fine and can operate just fine and charge your Steam Deck at the same time. So if you're looking for kind of a uh, very small setup to do a docking situation, this works just fine. This is also very nice for something like the Xbox Series S, which is already very small. And the Xbox Series S can power this via USB-A uh, and the USB-C port. So you can power it just fine that way and then connect via HDMI. So a lot of functionality. The VRR mode is has a small range, but it's cool that it's there regardless. HDR does work, but when we are using HDR, power does go up. In standard def, uh, SDR mode, you will be using around 5 watts, so just be mindful of the power difference there. That's going to conclude my review on this particular portable monitor. Once again, thank you very much to Intel, Intel for sending this out to me for review. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.